Bilbo was wrong. Gollum did mean to come back. He was angry now and hungry, and he was a miserable, wicked creature, and already he had a plan. Not far away was his island, of which Bilbo knew nothing. And there, in his hiding place, he kept a few wretched oddments and one very beautiful thing. Very beautiful. Very wonderful. He had a ring, a golden ring, a precious ring. My birthday present, he whispered to himself, as he had often done in the endless dark days. That's what he wants now, yes. He wants it. He wanted it because it was a ring of power. And if you slipped that ring on your finger, you were invisible. Only in the full sunlight could you be seen, and then only by your shadow, and that would be shaky and faint. My birthday present. It came to me on my birthday, my precious. So he had always said to himself, but who knows how Gollum came by that present ages ago in the old days when such rings were still at large in the world. Perhaps even the master who ruled them could not have said. Gollum used to wear it at first till it tired him. And then he kept it in the pouch next his skin till it galled him. And now usually he hid it in a hole in the rock on his island, and always going back to look at it. And still sometimes he put it on when he could not bear to be parted from it any longer, or when he was very, very hungry and tired of fish. Then he would creep along dark passages looking for stray goblins. He might even venture into places where the torches were lit and made his eyes blink and smart, for he would be safe. Oh yes, quite safe. No one would see him, no one would notice him, till he had his fingers on their throat. Only a few hours ago he had worn it, and caught a small goblin imp. How it squeaked. He still had a bone or two left to gnaw, but he wanted something softer. Quite safe, yes, he whispered to himself. It won't see us, will it, my precious? No, it won't see us, and its nasty little sword will be useless, yes, quite. That is what was in his wicked little mind, as he slipped suddenly from Bilbo's side and flapped back to his boat and went off into the dark. Bilbo thought he'd heard the last of him. Still, he waited a while, for he had no idea how to find his way out alone. Suddenly he heard a screech. It sent a shiver down his back. Gollum was cursing and wailing away in the gloom, not very far off to the sound of it. He was on his island, scrabbling here and there, searching and seeking in vain. Where is it? Where is it? Bilbo heard him crying. Lost it is, my precious. Lost! Lost! Curses and crashes, my precious, is lost. What's the matter, Bilbo called? What have you lost? It must ask us, sweet Gollum. Not his business. No, Gollum. Gollum is lost. Gollum, Gollum, Gollum. Well, so am I, cried Bilbo, and I want to get unlost. And I won the game, and you promised. So come along. Come and let me out, and then go on with your looking. Utterly miserable as Gollum sounded, Bilbo could not find much pity in his heart, and he had a feeling that anything Gollum wanted so much could hardly be something good. Come along, he shouted. No, not yet, precious, Gollum answered. We must search for it. It's lost, Gollum. But you never guessed my last question, and you promised, said Bilbo. Never guessed, said Gollum. Then suddenly, out of the gloom came a shout. What has it got in its pockets is? Tell us that. It must tell fast. As far as Bilbo knew, there was no particular reason why he should not tell. Gollum's mind had jumped to a guess quicker than his. Naturally, for Gollum had brooded for ages on this one thing. He was always afraid of its being stolen. Bilbo was annoyed at the delay. After all, he had won the game pretty fairly at a horrible risk. Answers were to be guessed, not given, he said. But it wasn't a fair question, said Gollum. Not a riddle, precious, no. Oh, well, if it's a matter of ordinary questions, Bilbo said, then I asked one first. What have you lost? Tell me that. What has it got in its pockets, is? The sound came hissing louder and sharper. And as he looked towards it, to his alarm, Bilbo now saw two small points of light peering at it. As suspicion grew in Gollum's mind, the light of his eyes burned like a pale flame. What have you lost? Bilbo persisted. 
And now the light in Gollum's eyes had become a green fire and was coming swiftly nearer. Gollum was in his boat again, paddling wildly back to the dark shore, and such a rage of loss and suspicion was in his heart that no sword had any more terror for him. Bilbo could not guess what had maddened the wretched creature, but he saw that all was up, and the Gollum meant to murder him at any rate. Just in time, he turned and ran blindly back up the passage down which he had come, keeping close to the wall and feeling it with his left hand. What has it got in its pocket, sis? He heard the hiss loud behind him, and the splash as Gollum leapt from his boat. What have I, I wonder, he said to himself, as he panted and stumbled along. He put his left hand in his pocket. The ring felt very cold as it quietly slipped onto his groping forefinger. The hiss was close behind him. He turned now and saw Gollum's eyes like small green lamps coming up the slope. Terrified, he tried to run faster, but suddenly he struck his toes on a snag in the floor and fell flat with his little sword under him. In a moment, Gollum was on him. But before Bilbo could do anything, recover his breath, pick himself up or wave his sword, Gollum passed by, taking no notice of him, cursing and whispering as he ran. What could it mean? Gollum could see in the dark. Bilbo could see the light of his pale eyes, shining even from behind. Painfully he got up and sheathed his sword, which was now glowing faintly again. Then very cautiously he followed. There seemed nothing else to do. There was no good crawling back down to Gollum with water. Perhaps if he followed him, Gollum might lead him to some way of escape without meaning to. Curse it! Curse it! Curse it! hissed Gollum. Curse the baggins! It's gone! What is it got in its pockets? Is all we guess, we guess, my precious. He's found it. He must have, yes. My birthday present. Bilbo pricked up his ears. He was at last beginning to guess himself. He hurried a little, getting as close as he dared behind Gollum, who was still going quickly, not looking back, but turning his head from side to side, as Bilbo could see from the faint glimmer on the walls. My birthday present. Curse it, how did we lose it, my precious? Yes, that's it. When we came this way last, when we twisted that nasty young squeaker, that's it, curse it, it slipped from us. After all these ages and ages, it's gone. Oh. Suddenly Gollum sat down and began to weep, a whistling and gurgling sound horrible to listen to. Bilbo halted and flattened himself against the tunnel wall. After a while, Gollum stopped weeping and began to talk. He seemed to be having an argument with himself. It's no good going back there to search, no. We doesn't remember all the places we visited. And it's no use. The Baggins has got it in his pockets. Is. The nasty noser has found it, he says. We guesses, precious, only guesses. We can't know till we find the nasty creature and squeeze it. But it doesn't know what the present can do, does it? It'll just keep it in its pockets, is. It doesn't know, and it can't go far. It's lost itself, the nasty, nosy thing. It doesn't know the way out, it said so. It said so, yes, but it's tricksy. It doesn't say what it means. It won't say what it's got in its pockets, is. It knows. It knows a way in, it must know a way out, yes. It's off to the back door. To the back door, that's it. The goblinses will catch it then. He can't get out that way, precious. Shh. Oh, goblinses. Yes. But if it's got the present, our precious present, then goblinses will get it. Oh. They'll find it. They'll find out what it does. We shan't ever be safe again. Never. Oh. One of the goblinses will put it on, and then no one will see him. He'll be there, but not see him. Not even our clever eyes will notice him. He'll come creepsy and tricksy and catch us. Oh, oh. Then let's stop talking, precious, and make haste. If the baggins has gone that way, we must go quick and see. Go. Not far now. Make haste. With a spring, Gollum got up and started shambling off at a great pace. Bilbo hurried after him, still cautiously though his chief fear now was of tripping on another snag and falling with a noise. His head was in a whirl of hope and wonder. It seemed the ring he had was a magic ring. It 
made you invisible. He had heard of such things, of course, in old tales, but it was hard to believe that he really had found one by accident. So there it was. Gollum, with his bright eyes, had passed him by only a yard to one side. On they went, Gollum flip-flapping ahead, hissing and cursing. Blue were behind, going as softly as a hobbit can. Soon they came to places where, as Bilbo had noticed on the way down, side passages opened this way and that. Gollum began at once to count them. One left, yes. One right, yes. Two right, yes, yes. Two left, yes, yes. So on and on. As the count grew, he slowed down and he began to get shaky and weepy. But he was leaving the water further and further behind and he was getting afraid. Goblins might be about and he had lost his ring. At last he stopped by a low opening on their left as they went up. Seven right, yes. Six left, yes, he whispered. This is it. This is the way to the back door, yes. Here's the passage. He peered in and shrank back. But we dursn't go in, precious. No, we dursn't. Goblins is down there. Lots of goblins is. We smell them. What shall we do? Curse them and crush them. We must wait here, precious. Wait a bit and see. So they came to a dead stop. Gollum had brought Bilbo to the way out after all. But Bilbo could not get in. There was Gollum sitting humped up right in the opening. His eyes gleamed cold in his head as he swayed it from side to side between his knees. Bilbo crept away from the wall more quietly than a mouse, but Gollum stiffened at once and sniffed, and his eyes went green. He hissed softly but menacingly. He could not see the hobbit, and now he was on the alert and he had other senses that the darkness had sharpened, hearing and smell. He seemed to be crouched right down with his flat hands played on the floor and his head thrust out nose almost to the stone. Though he was only a black shadow in the gleam of his own eyes, Bilbo could see or feel that he was tense as a bowstring, gathered for a spring. Bilbo almost stopped breathing and went stiff himself. He was desperate. He must get away out of this horrible darkness while he had any strength left. He must fight. He must stab the foul thing, put its eyes out, kill it. It meant to kill him? No, not a fair fight. He was invisible now. Gollum had no sword. Gollum had not actually threatened to kill him or tried to yet. And he was miserable, alone, lost. A sudden understanding of pity mixed with horror welled up in Bilbo's heart. A glimpse of endless, unmarked days without light or hope of betterment. Hard as stone, cold fish sneaking and whispering. All these thoughts passed in a flash of a second. He trembled. And then quite suddenly, in another flash, as if lifted by a new strength and resolve, he left. No great leap for a man, but a leap in the dark. Straight over Gollum's head he jumped, seven feet forward and three in the air. Indeed, had he known it, he only just missed cracking his skull on the low arch of the passage. Gollum threw himself backwards and grabbed as the hobbit flew over him. But too late, his hands snapped on thin air, and Bilbo, falling fair on his sturdy feet, sped off down the new tunnel. He did not turn to see what Gollum was doing. There was a hissing and cursing almost at his heels at first. Then it stopped. All at once there came a blood-curdling shriek, filled with hatred and despair. Gollum was defeated. He dared go no further. He had lost, lost his prey, and lost, too, the only thing he had ever cared for, his precious. The cry brought Bilbo's heart to his mouth, but still he held on. Now faint as an echo, but menacing, the voice came behind. Thief! 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 Baggins, we hate it! We hate it! We hate it forever! <laughs>